May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Our scripture for this night comes from the 26th chapter of Matthew, verses 6 and 7. Now, while Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came to him with him with an alabaster jar of very costly oil, and she poured it on his head as he sat at the table. We hear about oil in the scriptures in many different places. A lot of the times it is being used to anoint someone in some way to be poured over their head or washed down their face. We hear about David being anointed as king as a young boy. We hear the psalmist, most likely David, talking about his head being anointed with oil in the 23rd Psalm. We think of oil as something that can be a sign of God's presence and healing and about setting something apart. It makes it special. And I don't know about you, but there's times when I read about the oils in the scriptures and I can smell it. And I can feel the slipperiness on my fingers just by hearing about that oil. We also hear about oil when it comes to light and lamps. You know, we hear of the ten bridesmaids, five who were wise, five who were foolish, and five who brought the oil, and five who didn't, and the lessons that come from that. We hear about oil when it comes to cooking. The widow who was able to feed Elijah with just a small amount of oil and grain, enough that she thought would be her son and hers last meal, and all of a sudden there was an abundance. Oil was very common thing in the scripture most likely most of it was probably olive oil of some sort because that was the abundant crop in the time one of my favorite stories of oil is the one that our key verse from matthew was taken from the story of the woman pouring water over or oil over jesus and i can just imagine the oil washing down dripping off of his face and smell it as the fragrance filled the room, perhaps even overwhelmed the room. The story of a woman who uses a jar of oil, an expensive jar at that, and anoints Jesus with it, filling the room with fragrance, washing him clean. In my opinion, that that was a beautiful gift that she gave to Jesus. And Jesus even says as much. She says that, he says that she was anointing him for burial. And those who were gathered didn't really understand what that meant. But we do as we approach the time of the cross. It was a beautiful gift that she gave to him. Now, could she have used this oil for something else? Of course she could have. The the ones present point out very quickly that this was an expensive oil. A lot of money could have come from this. It could have been sold and the money given to the poor, which of course they were being a little bit hypocritical because to give money to the poor meant giving money to them and they would have probably kept a good bit of it. But it would have been a nice gesture and it could have helped a lot of people in that way. She could have sold it and given the money to something else. She could have saved the money for the future. She could have done a lot other than pouring it in some ways wastefully over the head of Jesus. Maybe she could have just used a little bit of oil to anoint Jesus. Spread out the oil that was so valuable and maybe that would have been a good idea. After all, there can be too much of a good thing sometimes. We've all stood close to that person who really likes their perfume and they use just a little bit too much of it. Do you ever have that experience? They might think that more is better because I like it so much, but oftentimes a little bit can go a very long way. She could have used some of the oil to light the room to give light in a dark place. She could have used it for cooking, though it really wasn't that kind of oil. If she used it to anoint Jesus, it wasn't really the cooking kind of oil, but it was still oil. There were many things that she could have done, and she chose to anoint the King of Kings before his death. I think she did the right thing. (laughs) We don't use oil 
in our worship in the same way that the scriptures did. For a time we were anointing at the end of services, but who knows if we'll continue to do that or when we might do that again. We don't live with whether or not we have oil determining if we will survive. We don't cook in that way. We don't really um, heat in the same way. We're not talking about heating oil. We're talking about that, that more of an olive oil kind of thing. It doesn't determine our lives. But yet, it's so simple that it's still part of our lives. You would go into your cupboards and maybe dig. You Maybe you have to dig a little bit, but you're going to find some sort of oil somewhere. Vegetable oil, olive oil, something like that. Because we do still cook with it. We do still use it. A lot of the days. Because it is such a simple thing. But it's not just used in that way. It's still used to anoint and to set apart just as it was used for Jesus. Oil is one of those things where we don't even think about it anymore. It's just there. But perhaps we should think about it. Perhaps we should think about the gift that this woman gave to Jesus by anointing him and preparing his body for death. We don't like to prepare for death. <laughs> We don't like to think about it. There are so many people that don't do anything to prepare for what is inevitable in their life, and that is their death. They don't prepare wills. They don't prepare things. But yet this woman prepared Jesus' body with simple oil. What do we need to prepare as we walk to the cross? As we wait for the tomb to be empty, what is it that we need to prepare and set apart and make special. Perhaps we should take a little oil and put it on our foreheads or put it on our hands so we can smell it and know that God has set us apart as his children. Next time you use oil to cook, to light a lamp, to clean, to anything, think of it as anointing. Think of it as setting apart. Think of it as preparing our Lord for his death. And let us walk to the cross together, smelling that fragrance, knowing that we have been called and we have been claimed as God's beloved. Amen. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it.
great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.